Good evening once again. I'm Stephanie Rule, and we're going to begin this broadcast with some very good breaking news. The Senate has just voted to pass the bipartisan debt ceiling bill. The vote was 63-36. It comes some 24 hours after the House passed the same bill. It raises the nation's debt limit for the next two years while also imposing new caps on spending. It now goes to the president's desk for his signature with four days to go before the Monday default deadline. So let's get straight to NBC News Capitol Hill correspondent Ali Vitali, who has been standing by for hours and hours. All right, Ali, it happened. How did this whole thing go down tonight? Yeah, it was less with a bang and more with a whimper, Steph. Weeks and weeks of high-stakes negotiations here in Washington, covering each and every turn of them as Speaker McCarthy and his top allies huddled with top White House officials over the course of several weeks to hammer out this deal. And now the Senate finishing it up in the dead of night, sending it now to the president's desk and avoiding default with days to go until that X date deadline on Monday. That's good news. And frankly, I have to tell you that we've seen a lot of these late nights in the Senate, having votes that are done within nine or 10 or even 11 minutes is really fast by Senate standards. So it does give you a sense that even though they did 11 of these amendment votes, they were looking to do them as quickly as possible, just trying to get this off their plate here in the Senate and move it on. I also think it was fascinating to watch just how this vote ultimately shook out. We had 36 no votes, as you mentioned. Some of those were the most progressive Democrats voting against this in part because of the work requirements that were placed on anti-poverty programs such as SNAP benefits. Senator Fetterman, for example, releasing a statement just in the last few minutes explaining that as why he voted no on this. That's also true for people like Senator Elizabeth Warren, Senator Bernie Sanders. And then on the Republican side of this, you see other right-wing hardliners also taking a similar stance to what we saw from House Freedom Caucus members uh, just earlier this week when they took their vote, saying that they don't like some of the things that are in this for reasons of spending caps, that it doesn't save enough. And interestingly, we see people like Senator Tim Scott, the only senator right now running for president among those no votes. There's also some tea leaf reading to be done for those of us who like to see how Republican leadership votes on this. Everyone in leadership voted for this bill, except for the number three Senate Republican, John Barrasso. That could be something that's interesting to watch as we see what leadership could look like in a kind of post-McConnell era when and if McConnell decides to step aside at some point. So all of that giving us some nice tea leaf reading here. But again, it was pretty no drama because none of these amendment votes, Steph, were ever expected to pass. In fact, if any of them did, that would have been really bad news because it would have meant that this bill would have had to go from the Senate back to the House, and we almost certainly would have defaulted then. So the amendment vote's sort of just a formality to get all the senators on board. And again, although it's 11 o'clock at night, usually past my bedtime, I know it's not for you, this was really fast by Senate standards. It's also pretty unusual for Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer to yeah. work so seamlessly together. But Mitch McConnell has been signaling for months, this thing is going to get done, this thing is going to get done. This thing is going to get done. And for McConnell, he really farmed out the negotiations to his House counterpart, Speaker Kevin McCarthy. In large part, that's because McCarthy had the more unruly task here. Herding cats in the House right now is a lot harder than doing it on the Senate side of this building. Both sides have really thin margins, but the House side, of course, is the more difficult task. And that's why we saw McConnell give McCarthy the keys to these negotiations. Several weeks ago, it was the core four members of Congress plus Biden in the White House hammering these deals out. But as soon as we watched it get whittled down to a smaller group of just McCarthy and his top aides and allies, as well as top negotiators for the White House, that's where we really started to watch this deal come together, Steph. That's not to say that there wasn't consternation from the Senate side of this. Senators always like to think that they are the ones running the show. And quite often with negotiations, especially over the last few years, they have been. The House though, in this case, really did take center stage. And it's why we watched some of the senators like Lindsey Graham, Tom Cotton, really lamenting the way that, de that there were caps put on defense spending. They're not fans of that. And it's why we might see the Senate move on a supplemental funding bill. That's one of the things that senators were discussing tonight. The amendments went down. That didn't go anywhere. But we could see the Senate move on that at another point in the next few months.